That's just one thing that I didn't finish in the last video, and that's fixing up the assets, the impact of the interest payments to the central bank and dividend payments by the central bank to the uh, Treasury uh, in terms of its impact on the central bank's equities. And here we have the very first entry which affects the e equity of the uh, central bank. And of course, I've got a minus on my mistake. Interest payments increase the equity of the central bank. And of course, dividend payments back to the Treasury, which happen to be identical to the interest payments. When you leave, leave out, well, it's partly there's going to be costs of the central bank operating with their marginal, trivial compared to the uh, scale of the operations overall. Um, so that's, that's the overall is, uh, account economy from the point of view of the central bank. <coughs> and looking at the point of view of the private banking sector, we have lending and re lending by uh, banks to capitalists, repayment of debt by capitalists, increasing and decreasing their assets respectively. And then we have governments uh, spending, increasing bank assets, taxation, reducing it. I'll just move those two around just to make them the same order as the lending and repayments up above. Okay, and ditto in terms, okay, now government bonds has, I'll, I'll leave it down here. So spending uh, by the government sector increases bank equity, uh, bank assets, uh, taxation reducing is, uh, uh, the selling of bonds is an asset swap, uh, interest payments on bonds increase bank equity and central banks uh, as well as bank assets and central bank purchases of bonds are an asset swap. Now what I want to look at is the amount of money this creates in the economy and the amount of economic activity that generates. So the amount of money in the economy is because I haven't got cash involved here. Money is simply the amount of money in bank accounts and that's firms deposit accounts, capitalist deposit accounts, workers deposit accounts and the equity of the banking sector out of which the banking sector spends. And we start from a situation, so let's go, go back and recalculate all this, start initially, uh, where the assets are just the loans of the private banks to capitalists, uh, the liabilities of the three deposit accounts, banks are necessarily in positive equity, therefore the remainder, the, the non-bank private sector is necessarily in negative equity. We start from that point. And now I've added in the government sector, which can do uh, spend more than it gets back in taxation. And the first thing I want to take a look at it, because it's something that I got wrong before I built this model, and that's that if anybody asked me whether government deficits created money, my normal answer was uh, to the extent that that uh, deficit is monetized by the central bank. In other words, the extent to which the central bank purchases bonds. It turns out I was wrong. Uh, it is simply the fact that it's running a deficit, and that's something which Stephanie makes the case from the MMT point of view in her book. So I just want to illustrate that. So it started off with no uh, net uh, debt creation and no net government creation, just to get the model started. I'll now run a 1% of GDP deficit. Instantly you have the government sector going into negative equity and the, therefore pushing the non-government sector into, towards positive equity. Um, and that's without any open market operations. Now what if the government, but the, the central bank decides to buy, uh, say 10% of the, of the bonds, 20%, 30%, 40%, doesn't have any impact. It's simply, what's, the reason that this doesn't have any impact, uh, the, the, I'll just actually stop that for a second and show the uh, level of bond ownership between <coughs> banks and non-banks, I haven't actually, uh, the banks and the, the um, private banks and the um, um, central bank, uh, I think we lost with too much detail here on the, on the uh, so this, is, this is bonds owned by the treasury and this is bonds owned by the central bank. So let's just graph those two and then you'll see the impact of you making those changes more clearly. So the top line is, is treasury bonds owned by the, center, by the tr private banks and the, bottom, the red line is treasury bonds owned by the central bank. I'll go back to the central bank doing no, mar ma ma no open market operations. That's effectively zero. I'll just make it actually, uh, actually zero. Okay, 
and then we're now going to start with a 1% of GDP uh, deficit by the government sector. So there we have the money supply increasing. After a while you'll see GDP starts to grow, what that starts to happen. Because for initially there's the, the um, shifting of the equity uh, from the non-bank to the bank sector, uh, given the initial conditions weren't equilibrium conditions. And now you're seeing the creation of money by the government sector, uh, enabling more money to exist in the economy, enabling a higher turnover of GDP. Uh, and the money, so you can see the rate of growth of the money supply there, which is proportional to the, uh, uh, the scale of the deficit being run by the government. Now, if I decide to um, say that the central bank purchases the uh, bonds that are being issued, you can see that I'm having a substantial impact on who owns government bonds. Uh, I've now got the government, got the central bank purchasing 1.4 times as many bonds are being issued. It's actually taking bonds out of the hands of private banks and putting it into um, uh, the central bank. And that's ch changing the debt situation of the government sector. Its debt to the private sector is falling now. Um, but nothing, there's no change at all in how the economy operates because what actually causes the growth in the money supply, pardon me, let's bring up, ah, got some hassles with, ah, how we size godly tables in the current beta that I'm using right here. So it's going to, this is, let's actually stretch that out a bit. Good. Now I know I can access the open godly table menu. Okay. Sorry about that little hassle. So it's simply the fact that these two differ, that the government is spending more in firms and it's taxing back off them. That is increasing the asset side of the banking sector. Therefore, it increases the liability side, and the liabilities of the banking sector are the, the sum of them is the money supply in existence. So that operation alone increases the amount of money in the economy, and whether that uh, is an increase in assets caused by bank reserves rising or by tr the tr bonds owned, the tr treasury bonds owned by the bank except rising is immaterial. Uh, it is simply the fact that the government is running a deficit that creates the money. So the central bank doesn't have to monetize the um, um, treasury d uh, deficit to cause money to be created. And the banks, the government is not borrowing money from the banks when it runs a deficit, it's actually putting money in the banks, it's creating the money. So open market operations uh, reduce the notional debt of the government sector. Let's just run that again from the outset. And I'm going to, uh, actually I've got a negative there, let's just start that again. If, for example, and that's what we can re pretty much see happening right now, uh, the central bank is buying all the bonds being issued by the uh, by the Treasury, then the bonds in the, um, in the, in the uh, Treasury ri rise up, um, money is created, <coughs> there's no debt by the government to the private sector. Now if we go to the other situation where the bonds are all sold to the private sector, then we have government debt turning up but it's not really government debt. It's uh, the assets. It's, it's, it's the asset side of the liability side of when it created the money, which is actually driving the economic performance. So OMAs, in that sense, are irrelevant. Now let's go, and I'll just go back and set that back to uh, zero once more. Okay. So let's now look at uh, what happens if the government runs a surplus. So I'll run a, I'll run a deficit for a while, and I'll run a deficit of roughly 2% of GDP, because over the last 120 years, that's pretty much the average deficit that the government has run. And all this money is now being financed by issuing bonds to banks. So if you're a deficit hawk, you'd look at that and see a rising government debt ratio. That's what's happening down here. Government ratio, debt ratio is now about 20% of GDP. Oh, this is terrible. We have to reduce government debt. You're not looking at the fact that because the economy is growing, 
um, the level of private debts remaining constant here. You have a less indebted private sector coming out of this, uh, and, the, and the private sector is actually now in positive equity. The private non-bank sector, because the government is running a deficit, it has a surplus. Uh, when you look at government versus non-government, the government's uh, equity is the mirror image of the equity of the private sector, literally to the dollar. So let us stop this for a moment now and look at the net equity of the government sector in here versus the net equity of the non-government sector. The government's negative equity is precisely equal to the, the non-government sector's um, positive equity. So the government running a deficit puts the private sector in surplus. That is precisely the MMT case. They normally make it about the, the deficit, which is an annual basis. I'm not looking at the accumulated impact of that over time on the equity of the, the, the accumulated equity of the well, you know, years and years and years of this happening. And if you want to be, you want the private sector to be in positive equity, then you want the government to be in negative equity. Um, and then, of course, you take a look at the, in terms of looking from the point of the banking sector versus the non-banking. The banking sector is um, has to be in positive equity, and the government running a, a deficit generates that positive equity for it. The non-bank sector, which now includes the government, must be in matching negative equity there. If we then separate out just the private sector and see what's happening to the private sector. The private sector starts in negative equity and goes into positive equity courtesy of the government running a deficit. So those are the fundamental MMT points and they're completely valid.